Recently, researchers analyzed starches left on 20 obsidian tools from one of the oldest sites of Rapa Nui, finding direct evidence for the translocation of a traditional suite of Polynesian plant crops as well as some previously unidentified taxa, including those from South America. Let's discuss this and why this is so important for archaeology. Rapa Nui, more famously known as Easter Island, is one of the most remote places in the Pacific to be settled by the Polynesian people. The tools that these researchers analyzed were from the oldest cultural occupation at the Inakana site, which is dated to around 1000 to 1300 CE. This cultural deposit is one of the earliest known on the island. Obsidian, as well as flint, chert, and other rocks, is shaped through a process called flint napping. The homogeneous, glass-like nature of the stone allows strikes to remove predictably sized and shaped pieces, called flakes, which have razor-sharp edges. While removing many flakes from a piece of stone can allow one to shape a complex tool, individual flakes are very sharp and effective tools by themselves, and take minimal skill and time to produce. By looking at the starches left on these stone tools from plants, they found direct evidence for a number of plants not previously known in the suite of Polynesian foods on the island, including breadfruit, ginger, and two species of tropical trees used for making canoes and boats. They also found evidence for South American crops, including sweet potato, which is previously known in Polynesian agriculture but not specifically on Rapa Nui, achira, manioc, and xanthosoma. What's so interesting about this is that while archaeologists have known for a while that there's some sort of contact between ancient Polynesians and the people of South America, the nature of this is poorly understood and the evidence for this has been investigated minimally so far. For the colonization of new islands like Rapa Nui, there need to be several stages of discovery for a successful colony to get going. The first would include discovery, but also inventorying the resources that the island has, and several return trips to ensure a proper colony has been founded. The Polynesian people were, and are, excellent oceanic navigators, and introduced over 70 species of plants throughout their places that they settled in the Pacific, including not only species for plant foods, but also for building watercraft. This recent study aimed at contributing to the knowledge of the initial colonization and settlement of Rapa Nui and Polynesian agriculture. The initial cultural deposits of the site from where the tools were sampled are dated to around 1150 to 1280 calibrated CE. Obsidian is a volcanic glass that is incredibly sharp and very useful for making stone tools. This set of 20 particular tools was sampled because of their context in an early dated cultural complex and them being the correct size and shape for processing plant foods. When a plant food item is cut, scraped, mashed, and so forth, microscopic starches adhere to the surface of the tool used. If there are nooks and crannies for these starches to get lodged into on these tools, they can be trapped and preserved for hundreds or thousands of years, allowing archaeologists to identify the plants people were processing in the past. After being excavated, these were stored in plastic bags, and before being analyzed, they were rinsed with water to ensure that surface contaminants, including modern starches, were not present on the tools. The analysts sampled archaeological starches from the tools by using a plastic toothpick to pick into little grooves, cracks, and striations present on the obsidian tools. And they just scraped these starches directly onto a microscope slide so that they could be analyzed at high magnifications. Separately, these archaeologists prepared a modern sample of starches from known Polynesian plant foods and canoe plants. These were important so that they could identify the archaeological samples for their analysis. 46 archaeological starches were identified on these stone tools, and 20 had over a 90% probability rate with a correct successful identification. Due to the smooth nature of volcanic glass, there are very few opportunities for archaeological starches to get trapped on them, such as cracks and striations on the tool surface. These obsidian flight tools were probably used for processing tubers, rhizomes, and fruits, and kernels prior to cooking. As some tools had more than one archaeological starch present on them, it is inferred that these were multi-purpose tools rather than single use. 
These obsidian tools were likely used to cut and scrape, as food in traditional Polynesian cooking involves husking, scraping, peeling, and grating of raw food before it is grilled, roasted, or baked into a pudding. The researchers were able to identify several Polynesian plant food species that were not previously known to Rapa Nuuan archaeology. These included ginger, breadfruit, and Tahitian apple. They also identified two species of canoe plant trees that were not previously known on the island. Three species of South American origin were identified during the starch analysis. These included achira, sweet potato, and manioc. While sweet potato has long been known as the sole source of evidence for Polynesian contact with South America, its use prehistorically in Rapa Nui was not widely documented. The other two species of South American plants were a complete surprise to the researchers. In addition to the evidence gained by these three South American plant species, there has been a recent genetic study showing a small genetic influence from South American peoples into the Polynesian gene pool. As these archaeological starches from South American plants were found in some of the earliest occupations on Rapa Nui, this is evidence for sweet potato introduction and South American plant introduction much earlier into Polynesian cooking and agriculture than previously thought. This study also provided the first empirical evidence that prehistorically, sweet potato was not the only South American plant brought into Polynesian traditional cooking. There is still little evidence for the nature and intensity of interaction between Polynesian and South American peoples. However, the introduction of these plant foods into Polynesian agriculture indicates that this was not likely to be a single fleeting encounter, but likely was the result of multiple return voyages and, at least to some degree, a peaceful interaction. This study by Beringer et al. goes to show how a carefully conducted study can use stone tools as simple as obsidian flakes to make revolutionary discoveries that change our perceptions of the past. This analysis of plant starches on a few flakes is one more step in understanding how ancient Polynesians settled Rapa Nui and much more of Oceania.